History of Mining in Oregon by Kirby Jackson, at the February Miners' Rally, State Capitol, Oregon. I want to talk a little about the history of mining here. Uh, in this state, the actual gold rush in this state actually started up here. As they were talking before, there were early discoveries that weren't documented. There were some on Winbury Creek in the uh, early 1840s done by a surveyor, about 1847 when it was surveyed. Later on, the major strikes took place down around Josephine County. I don't know what that was. Probably not a good sign for me. In 1851, uh, there was a band of prospectors left Oregon City. They were headed for the California gold fields. And contrary to what we've been told, I was, I was recently in a, a thing that Oregon Public Broadcasting made that was kind of a whitewash thing of let's hate on the miners, how the miners killed all the Indians and they didn't get along with them. History, however, is the Rollins Party, they left Oregon City in early 1851 and they wandered down and they were heading for the gold fields down in California in the mother load. And they went down there and they found a friendly Indian alongside of a trail and they said, we're looking for gold. And he says, hey, go down there. He pointed them down to the Illinois River, and they made that first discovery on Josephine Creek, right there at the mouth. Uh, there's people still mine there today. There's still a lot of gold down there. If you talk to a lot of miners, him right there, he's found gold down there. It's still there. There's still lots of gold coming out. And that's where our, our first real major gold discovery took place in this state. And ever since after that, the mineral industry jumped up, uh, and we've produced vast quantities of gold, silver, and other minerals. In the state of Oregon, we only have records on uh, production between 1851 uh, and 1942. 1942 was the year that the uh, War Board declared that gold was a non-critical mineral and therefore we couldn't mine it. Between that time in southern Oregon where I'm from, Josephine and Jackson County alone produced 55.6 million ounces of gold. Do you understand how much, what that is today in, in prices today? Eastern Oregon produced a little more than that. The one difference between the two is we were more placer miners in southwest Oregon than they were in northeast Oregon where they were load miners. We've also mined a lot of copper down there. This is also going to be affected. Down in Josephine County where I'm from, we mined 6.5 million tons of copper. That's tons with a T. That's a lot of copper. Lots of nickel resources, silver down there. You name it, we've Platinum. got it. Platinum down there. There was a, a miner here in, uh, down by Eugene, uh, down in the Bohemia District, actually discovered barite. We had no idea there was barite in Oregon. These are mineral specimens, and they're, they're beautiful, and they've got a demand. And needless to say, we have an awful lot of resources out there. I was talking earlier about the uh, marble nut house here. In the 1930s, the state of Oregon gradually decided they weren't too happy about mining anymore. They weren't uh, so supportive as they had been previously, and they decided that they would create Dogami. Dogami was actually created by an act of legislature to basically supposedly promote mining, but what it actually turned into was kind of a spy network. And they went around and they spied on all the miners. And after that, that was kind of the end of it. It was kind of all downhill from there. We don't, as I was telling a reporter earlier today, we don't do a lot of real mining in Oregon. We talk about, you know, the environmentalists talk about the great damage that little suction dredges make and that high bankers do and people with sluice boxes and a hand shovel. We used to do real mining in this state at one time. The area that I represent, uh, Galice Mining District, our district was originally established in 1853 on the mouth of Galice Creek. And this is one of the earlier discoveries in southwest Oregon. Uh, the miners who were there, the, the first discovery guys, they actually got killed by a bunch of Indians and then they later had to go in and make another discovery in 1855. During the 19, uh, about 1900, a lot of those claims consolidated and they formed the old Channel Mining Company. And this became the, the great granddaddy of all hydraulic mines in the state of Oregon. The old channel mine was so big that the plume off the old channel mine out of their sluice boxes ran 13 miles off the coast of the state of Oregon. That's how big this was. Huge, huge mine. A lot of people down there, they're, they're pretty aware of it. This mine covers several miles right there, cuts through Galice Creek, Tabor Creek, and a bunch of other small creeks. It is a huge mine. It looks like nothing else in the state. About the same time, we had take place what was called the Galice Mud Mining War. And it was a result of largely the old channel mine. At that time, Harry Lewis was operating in the 1930s. 
And apparently the old channel was they were running so much material that uh, there was a farmer down in Coos County said, well, the water, the water is a little muddy and I'm not sure if it's good for my cows. And the state of Oregon got into a very big battle with the miners around Galice and lost because what, what was found in the court cases was that miners have congressionally granted rights. Now, even though the state of Oregon back in the 1930s learned this lesson, apparently they have forgotten that. Oh, no! They seem to have forgotten that we actually have rights. I want to tell you kind of a, a historical story here about how this mining law we have that we all operate under came to being. Early on in the, 18, in the late 1840s and the 1850s, we had mining camps. These were the first towns on the West Coast. Pretty much all your major cities in the gold areas. I'm from Grants Pass. It was actually started as a result of mining. Uh, Waldo, where Tom Kitchar is from out that area, that was a mining town. We had all these camps. They had mining districts. The miners organized. These mining districts were the local government, much as Tom Kitchar was talking about. Now, contrary to what we've all been told in various history books and what the environmentalists say, the mining law we work under was not written by lawyers, it was not written by politicians, it was actually written by the miners. This was federal recognition of what the miners were always doing. As my shirt says, it says we have vested jurisdiction and authority since 1866. This is important to understand. If you go read the 1872 Act, you can find this in 30 U.S.C. 22 and 30 U.S.C. 28. It says that the miners can make the laws. Why is it that we're out here on the front steps and there's somebody up there in the marble nut house basically telling us we can't do anything anymore when we have a congressionally granted right to mine? You know, if you read the Admission Act that I mentioned earlier, it talks about acts of Congress and where the limitations of the state is. And it specifically says the state of Oregon, as terms of its statehood, it may not, absolutely may not, interfere with the major disposal of land that is disposed of by Congress. Our mining law is a disposal of land by act of Congress. We have granted rights, we have property, we all have a right to mine. We have a right to go out on the public domain of the United States, search for and hunt for locatable mineral deposits. If we find one, we have the right to appropriate it. And, and, and as far as everyone is concerned, it is supposed to be property, private property. It, it encloses it. As he said, it encloses it, just as you would your house or anywhere else. And when you understand this, that we have a state people inside this marble nut house basically saying, we don't care about your property, we don't care about this, they're not only violating the Admission Act, they're violating numerous other things. If you go on GaliceMining.com, I personally accused Alan Bates of about seven or eight crimes. Aww. You know, I kind of wandered around for a few days after that, kind of looking at the rooftops of my neighbor's houses, thinking, well, is there a sniper there somewhere? I'm going to kind of leave you with something. We've had a lot of discussions about this, and that's what happens if these bills do pass. What are you each individually going to do? This is, I can't tell you what to do. Nobody else up here can tell you what to do. It's all a personal decision what we're going to do. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, though. I'm going to figure out how much gold I have in my claims, and I'm going to start suing people. And I'm going to become a rich man. I know Tom Kitchar was talking about this. He was talking about this. I also have another message. This is specifically for Alan Bates. You will not stop mining inside the Galice Mining District. We will continue mining. Yeah.